Well, I'm here to present a project from a group that's called Geo Chicas. Um, I'm Selena Yang. I'm a PhD candidate. Also, I'm going to say this right now. I'm really nervous. I haven't given a talk in English in a while, so. <laughs> um, I'm from the National University of La Plata in Argentina. I also work for an NGO in Paraguay that works with, uh, we're digital rights advocates. And this project has nothing to do with my work. It's only about my, like, my interest of life and my research from my PhD. So, I want to start by telling you who we are. Geo Chicas, it's a group of women, all volunteer. We are over 100, 200 women from 22 different countries. Most of them are Spanish-speaking countries, but we've also, um, from last year, we were at a conference Thank you. that's called FOS4G in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and we started to talk with more women that are English-speaking women. So um, the group is getting bigger and bigger, and we're now trying to escalate from just Spanish to also English. How we started is um, I started researching for my, I started to do some re research for investigating for my PhD project and I needed to map some things and I didn't want to do it with commercial mapping tools. So I asked around what was the open source uh, alternative to this and many people pointed out to OpenStreetMap so at that time I was living in Argentina and I got into the community in Argentina and there were around 72 men and only like three women in the group <laughs> shocking <laughs> and, and I was really active because I was starting to learn everything for mapping and I kept asking and asking things and what time I don't know if many of you use telegram but you can uh, share stickers there like our images, and one guy posted something that said we should have a map of um, whorehouses and something else. And I told them like, um, and then you wonder why aren't there not more women in these kind of groups? And there, <laughs> and the guy told me, uh, and you wonder why you get called feminazis? I don't know if you're familiar with the term, which is the Nazi feminist. Also, I'm a feminist and a human right activist. <laughs> So after that, we started, uh, I started to talk to other girls from the region to see what their experiences were in this subject and how they felt in the community. I was about to get out of the community just because of that. The guy just apologized like, real quickly. He only said like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, but whatever. <laughs> so uh, the community invited me to go to something that's called state of the map. I'm sorry, to state of the map, which is the regional and international conference for OpenStreetMap to talk about my experience. And there I met some other women from the community that had gone through the same kind of uh, experiences, right? So that was back in 2016 in Brazil and we were just three women. <laughs> and now, as I was telling you, we're over 200 and in 22 different countries. And we're not only, I'm sorry, we're not only with the OpenStreetMap community right now, we're also with the OSGEO community. For, uh, for those who are not familiar with that, it's the Open Geospatial Foundation that works with uh, open, open geospatial software, basically. And again, for those also who are not familiar with OpenStreetMap, it's the alternative uh, collaborative open uh, initiative and that has more than 4, 4 million users, uh, a lot of GPS points <laughs> on the map, a lot of nodes, and more than a thousand collaborators. Also, the thing with this is that only 3% of those collaborators are women. So we believe that in the map, the data that it's been collected is completely biased, gender bias, by fact. So, we believe in the map as something that's not only a representation, like a static representation of territory, but something that is in constant state of being. And in, it's not only the representation, but it's also a social practice that, that comes with all, of, like all the knowledge and all the background that we have. And when we 
map something, it's not only an objective point, a GPS objective point, it's charged with our subjectivities and how we think it should be mapped. So every node has, for example, tags that reflect what that node is. So for you to find a church, you need to put the, the point there, the node, and then put the information that that's the church. The same happens not only with churches, but also with, for example, women's services centers and things like that. So if you only have 3% of women mapping, it means that only 3% of women, of collaborators, are mapping things that are of our interest. So that's basically why we do it. And we also are a community that wants to empower women in order to have more projects in the community that are led by women and that are focused on women. We also want to enlarge the OSM Women's Network because again, as I was telling you, we're, only, we're, we're mainly in Latin America and Spain uh, and also the OSGEO Network now. <laughs> have more participation of women in OSM and in tech activities create more spaces in which we can discuss uh, the role, the representation and participation of women because we don't see that women should be there as a number, but we also want to analyze um, what, are the we what, what are women's, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, in decision uh, making spaces, what is the role of women in these communities and also the representation of their interest in, in interests not only in the map, but also in the community agenda. Uh, we want to also discuss better codes of conduct because this is something that, as I was telling you before, it happened. This was born after someone called me feminazi, so that's completely wrong for us. And also we want to create more relevant geospatial data. As I was telling you, you can have a lot of uh, data, but not so much diversity in it. So, um, for example, there's something that you go and you do a query on the data on OpenStreetMap, and you can find more than, I think, a million car repair shops mapped, but you can only find like 2,000 feminine hygiene uh, points of, I don't know how to say this in English, it's, where you can find feminine hygiene products, basically. Or you can have, uh, I don't know, pick whatever kind of, establishment you want, but if you want to go check if you can find a um, center that it's like that works with gender violence, for example, with victims, that's open. We don't use any kind of data that's imposed. Uh, you can only find like three. So that's why we do this, because we believe that, again, data is super subjective and that we need to be there in order to find more things, in order to create more things and edit and curate more things that are of our interest. I want to show you a couple of projects that we have before I go to the, the main project that I was invited here to talk about. This is a feminine side map from Nicaragua. This was for 2017. We got this data from another group that's called Catholics for the Right of Choice or Decision. It's a Catholic group, a religious group that wants abortion to be legalized in not only Nicaragua, but it's also I don't know if it's only in Latin America, but maybe I think it's only in Latin America. This is another project that we created, which is a survey in the community to understand gender representation and how it affects the behavior of women in the community. We had more than 400 uh, responses over this. It was translated in five languages, and it's a lot, like, it's really long. I'm just gonna show it real quickly. Um, have you ever had experienced difficulty expressing point of view? These were the kind of questions because we wanted to see in depth what women were thinking. Actually, community members were thinking, but we were completely focused on women's experiences. And this, this is this skill on, we're still analyzing all the, all the responses because again, we're volunteers. <laughs> we don't get paid for to do this, but still on, on the move to to sh for us to share the results later on this year. We also have another project that and maybe, let's see, if it, okay, there it is. This is one of the first projects that we did as a regional, uh, with regional alliances with the other OpenStreetMap groups, which is a regional mapathon to map all the um, informal shelters in, let me tell you how many countries, 
um, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Mexico, Paraguay, and over eight different countries. Uh, we worked uh, with NGOs that liberated data sets for this and also with the state of many of these countries. And this was really focused also on women and how they lived their lives in informal, informal settlements and what happens when this was also in an alliance with the humanitarian open street map team, HOT, I don't know if you know it, but we wanted to see how living in informal settlements affected women's uh, everyday lives. Also, this is something that we also did with the humanitarian open street map team. It, this is a photo map of Oaxaca, a region in Mexico that was hit by an earthquake in 2017. And what we did is that we went mapping there to see how the um, immediate response was covered for the communities. And also we went there a year later of the earthquake to see how the recovery of the streets were doing and to create like a cross-reference data about women reports on gender violence in informal shelters. This is an ongoing project still, so we still don't have all the data, but we finished collecting the data and we're still analyzing it, but maybe at the end of this year as well, it's gonna be out there. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. This is our last project, which is also a mapathon, and what we're trying to do is to map all the regional um, centers for health, health services for women because as I was telling you, you can find clinics, but you cannot find clinics that are, that have, for example, gyneco gy gynecological, is that a word? Yeah, okay. Uh, gynecological uh, services for women. So when you try to search to find a gyno on the map, you won't, you won't be able to find it. So you would only find a clinic. So you go around and around and around, and at the end, the map doesn't work for you because it's not showing what you need. And this is something that we are doing for this year's international, was released for International Women's Day, as well as our second anniversary. And we're doing this in Spain. Right now we have data sets from Spain, Mexico, uh, Paraguay, and we're still waiting to get more information from Argentina as well and so many other countries, but most of them in Latin America. And well, this is, I'm sorry, everything's in Spanish, but again, we are Spanish speaking community, so I'm sorry. And these are, we also create some like learning spaces because we believe as like you were saying before, imposter syndrome, uh, this is something that many of us are not techies, many of us uh, come from social sciences, but we have, I don't know, some interest on, on mapping or in data or in gender. And we, create, like, we think that it's important for us to see that many of us have the techie abilities that, can be, that we can learn from them instead of always calling out to other allies or just always boys to help us out with when something breaks or if we need someone to put up a server, a geo server or something, we still have the capacity and the abilities within the group. So what we do are webinars and we do them almost, we're trying to get them like to do them every three months because it's a lot of preparation and a lot of time consuming. And it's been a great, it's been a great experience and we have a next, our next webinar, it's on Mapbox, it's on digital mapping. And we also have another thing that started out as just getting together to have some drinks and complain about the community. <laughs> of course. Um, that started out on Brazil when we first started as Geo Chicas, and now it has come like a big snowball thing that's called Geo Chicas Take. So Geo Chicas take Sao Paulo, Geo Chicas take Lima. And that's something that we create as a pre-event for all the events that we go to. And we invite women for a get together to get some drinks, to tell us what they think about uh, the event, if they're presenting, if they're nervous, if they need something. And just like to break the ice with them and to feel that they already know someone at the moment that the conference starts. Because I don't know if many of you, but sometimes when you go down to a conference, that's it. If you don't have like social skills, you're done. 
So yeah, that's something that for us is really important. It started again as a get together, but now it's something that's one of our main projects as well. And many people are always like, when are you gonna come here and have some drinks with us? And this is only a women's group. And it's not that we create an exclusivity groups or clubs or anything like that, but for experience and for everything that we've gone through, we understand that these are safe spaces and that we need them. And I'm sorry for the milk, but if you want mixed activities or anything, you have the whole community, <laughs> but we need these safe spaces for us. And now to what brought me here, it's the Streets of Women. This was a project that initially started in 2018 around International Women's Day. And what we try to do here is to gather information about nomenclature of the streets and why they're named after, no, how many are they named after men? or how many are named after women. And also it's linked to Wikipedia to see how many of these women have uh, their biography written. Also, I, I didn't put this here, but Wikipedia um, only has around 20% of women editors and only around 12 or 13% of biographies, of women biographies in the Wikipedia. So for us, this was one of our first projects in which we completely allied with another organization to, to formulate this project. Um, and this is how it looks like. I'll, also, I just want to say, we created this project, but I'm not the technical head of the project, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit of how we did it and show it around and maybe answer a couple of questions. But if you have more techie questions about this, I can direct you to the person who has all the techie knowledge. Um, so this is the map, these are the cities that we've done, and you're going to see that Argentina has many more cities, but because it's a really big uh, mapping community, and it has Buenos Aires, Resistencia, Rosario, and you have Bolivia, Cuba, which amazingly has the biggest percentage of streets named after women, who would have thought, um, Spain. This is something that we did in Spain. It's interesting because it's not only data sets that we got from OpenStreetMap, but the, I don't know how, if it's municipality, uh, they contacted us because they wanted to give us their data sets that were already clean and completely in shape for, for us to use them. And so we have Badalona and Barcelona in Spain. We have Mexico, the city of Mexico, Asuncion, Paraguay, of course I live there, hey. Peru and Uruguay. And it looks a little bit like this. Maybe we can. So if you, see, if you see here, you can see the amount of streets that are named after men, the amount of streets that are named after women as a percentage and as a regular number. And women have in a Wikipedia article also percentage and numbers. And you can only see color the streets that are named after people because we didn't want to include streets that were named after, I don't know, animals or battles or things like that. But we believe in, for example, also adding the name of saints, women saints, because we're not religious, many of us are not religious, um, but many of them were actual women in history, <laughs> regardless of their Catholic aspects. Um, so they are included. Barcelona, for example, it's really weird because it's all of the uh, formats of virgins. So it's Virgin Guadalupe, Virgin Maria, Virgin this, Santissima Virgin of something. Uh, but we still added that. And that's how it looks a little bit. I don't know if you want to see another city. And basically, yeah. The city of Mexico, which is really big, and the thing with this city is that uh, it had a lot of Nahuatl names, <laughs> which was really hard for us because we we're not from Mexico, and a couple of people from Mexico actually curated this data set, but still was really hard. And how we did it, it's on a script based on Node. We use a library uh, it's called TireReduce to get all the OpenStreetMap data to create the GeoJSONs. Um, I got five minutes, okay. Um, we used to use an API that was called Genderize, but it was really slow for us to be calling out the server every time that we needed to do a consultation on the data sets. So what we did is that we um, 
added to, our, to a local server a, a data set of Spanish names from the Spanish National Institute of Statistics. And we also did a, a, query, a query on, on Wikidata to extract 68,000 articles about women. And these are the, like, how we do it, we select the cities that we kind of know or that we know someone is there because we always, um, for us it's important that if we don't know the city, there's got to be someone local to tell us that, yes, this is a name of the street, this is something, that's something that happened to us in Argentina, that there was a uh, street well, that was called Esmeralda, that's uh, a women's name, but that was actually a, a street named after a battle or after a battleship. So we had to take it out and this and that, so yeah. Um, so we do a cross-reference from the Spanish names data set that we get and with the OpenStreetMap data set. And what we have is an 8% margin of error. We're trying to lower that on to a 1% error, but we're still trying to fix that. Um, then we filter the streets by male or female names, taking out the names that are not of people. Then we manually clean the data sets, and that's like you need to get a drink, sit, good light, and start doing it because <laughs> it's not easy, it's not nice, uh, but we do it. And also the last part is that we generate the GeoJSON to compare it again and start painting out the, the streets of OpenStreetMap, and then we upload the results to our GitHub. We're trying to get to GitLab because I know GitHub's now from Microsoft and that's that's something that we're still trying to teach. And that's all. Thank you.